Austrian Alps Tyrolean Cycle Tour, Summer 2022. Our very rough plan was to complete a loop in the mountains. We had just over three weeks at our disposal and we thought we'd head east before going south and then returning to Innsbruck, somewhere through the hills. Heading south, the jagged peaks of the Alps appeared on the horizon, the Matterhorn centre frame and very impressive. Nearing Innsbruck, we dropped low over the Zillertal, Otzal and Stubai Alps, where I trekked back in the 1980s. Fine. What carnage that would be. That's what you want crawling up your handlebars. One, two, three. Horrible great slugs. I don't think Trish is going to want tea in this mug, is she? This is Trish eating her melted chocolate from her bowl with a spoon. Is that right, Trish? Is it nice? Mm. Delicious. Yes, it's one of quite a few snakes we've seen in Austria. Not sure what it is, but it's hiding in this wall. It's quite a big one, this one. Just set the bikes up. It's very, very hot here, about 30 degrees in the shade, and we're about to head off for our hotel. And we're going to dump our bag before heading off to find a camp, hopefully. So we just dumped our holdall, our huge holdall here. And it'll stay here for three and a half weeks until we get back to Innsbruck. Heading down the Inn Valley was a great way to start. Gravity was on our side, and we gradually descended, flanked by lovely rocky mountains on both sides. Our aim to find a camp somewhere before it got dark. our first camp in Austria, right beside the Inn River in the deep shade because it is very hot. Trish tucking into her look what we found chicken tikka supper. We were sorely tempted to swim in the Inn's frigid glacial waters but the current was far too swift for that to be a safe option. We were on the road early as it felt like a scorching humid day was developing. Uh, Berserk Kufstein, what a great name! More gentle miles took us down the Inn Valley to Kufstein with its castle perched high above the river. Gradually we got more into the mountains and the terrain became slightly harder to cycle. We passed through fantastic villages, each house bedecked with balconies flowing with geraniums. But it was hot, hot work, past little chapels and luckily there was always a fountain for us to top up our bottles with deliciously cold water. It was a wild camp for night too, very hard to find in this cow country. Literally everywhere is fenced off as you can see. There's our camp on night too. Just beside a forest, up a farm track and hopefully no one will mind. No face flannel, so I am using a tea bag. While I cook, Trish planned the next day's route using Osmond mapping on her phone. Okay. A little tick on the right that was biting into me and a horse fly on the left that was also biting into me. Ticks seem to be increasingly common these days but we tried not to let thoughts of catching Lyme disease spoil our trip. Gravel trails and quiet lanes took us south through the lovely rural Kolantal Valley. There were even chalets with old sleighs and lined with equipment. Gradually the mountains became more impressive, great limestone peaks towering high above our trail and powerful rivers, the Salak here in the valley bottoms. These little chaffles are very common. We've seen loads of them today. We only realised we'd crossed the border into Germany when all the cars had D stickers on their rears. I've just arrived in a hopeful camp spot here, a little ho hollow, and just having a brew of tea and a pastry. We were camped in a hollow at the end of a field, just out of view of a nearby farm. 
Heading towards St Gilgin and Wolfgang's A, we were very pleased to have a cycleway. The traffic was fast and furious. It's heading towards St Gilgin and Wolfgang's A. Back in the summer of 2010, we had a family holiday here on the shores of Wolfgang's A, here in the distance, and it was rather nostalgic to be returning for the first time since then. Atop a tall levee, we cycled beside the Traun River towards Halstattersee, but boy was the traffic bad on one of the few roads without a cycle route. After a fantastically refreshing dip in the lake, we cast around to find a stealth camp, and we came across a fantastic one. Just above a railway, in a hidden hollow, we sat up camp with a terrific view over the lake. With the sausages frying, we enjoyed the wonderful views down over the lake and then up to the limestone peaks that bounded our camp. What a terrific spot to be camping, and for free. Minor roads and cycle routes took us beside Halstattersee down to Taraunsee, a stupendously spectacular lake imprisoned by sharp mountains on either side. Here we had a lovely refreshing dip, one of the great benefits of touring in the Austrian Alps. So many lakes and rivers and the water's lovely and warm too. We were out of the mountains for one day as we headed northeast through fields of maize and wheat. Yeah, this part of Austria feels almost French. Big fields of oats and maize and wheat. Gradually the terrain became hillier as we headed back towards the mountains. This is heading up the Ems Valley now, looking for somewhere to camp. 45 hot miles in the can. We set up camp in the deep shade beneath a large sweet chestnut tree. There's an Austrian alpine tick we found in the tent. Although the navigation was easy in the valley, it was surprisingly hard going with many, many undulations as we made our way gradually towards Gazausa National Park. There the mountains reared up spectacularly, the planspits dominating the campsite. Deep in the valley it was baking hot as we headed gradually upstream to the very foot of the mighty Planschbitz. Not quite the north face of the Eiger, but not far off. 1,200 metres of vertiginous limestone rising directly above Gestatterboden campsite. An absolutely fantastic spot. Here we paused for a rest day, exchanging the saddle for our shoes as we walked up into the surrounding hills, getting terrific views over the lovely limestone scenery. The Planschbitz really is a very, very spectacular peak, enhanced by the banks of mist wafting around. What a special place. Easy miles in the upper Enns Valley took us past castles and fields of maize, gradually heading towards the Salk Pass, a 1,790 metre crossing that we had to negotiate. Climbing in the hot afternoon sun was sweaty work and it was good to get some metres under our belt and pull into a wonderful wild camp at around about 1,200 metres. In the morning we continued climbing through open pastures with the cows grazing, the bells clanking and patches of forest to gradually more open terrain and finally the 1790 metre summit adorned with its sign covered in a maze of stickers. Who carries them up here I wonder? This is descending the Salk Pass. We almost got dizzy swinging around the numerous hairpin bends. As we descended, spits and splotches of rain came down and the sky looked menacing. We descended into the Mur Valley where more lovely bike trails and quiet roads led us to a sneaky stealth camp. Up a hill with a load of old builder's debris lying around, but a good spot nonetheless. Tea and a treat. That's what we always have when we arrive in camp. Heavy rain before the evening thunderstorm gets going. Very typical Austrian scenery this, wooded valleys, steep valley sides, wooden huts and buildings with shingles, often on the roof, often on the side. Oh, this is nearly at 1650 metres, steady climb. We found a lovely stealth camp beside the wide and swift flowing Drow River, an otter finding it very very hard to progress upstream.
easy miles beside the drow, another river heavily laden with a load of glacial silt and debris. This is leaving the drow. It's across the mountains we can see in the background there. How you doing Trish? After the rigours of the pass, it was wonderful to exchange switchbacks for the rural tranquillity of the Gale Valley, where we progressed to the top of broad levee, enjoying the views of meadows to the mountains beyond. Here we were just north of the Italian border, and there had been savage battles here in the First World War. It was hard to imagine on a beautiful day like this. This is our camp by the Guil River. What a fantastic spot. Sweltering today, 35 degrees or so. Big puffy thunderheads seem to be brewing up, so I wonder if they're even for a storm again here. In the cooler morning air, we cycled up into the upper Gale Valley, exchanging the flat lower part for very, very steep switchbacks as we wound our way up. Views were more than adequate compensation for all the effort, though. They were very, very spectacular, and we were pleased to have a clear day on this particular part of the trip. A 1540 metre pass took us out of the Gale Valley and over into the Drow. The weather was horrible. Hossing rain absolutely soaked us, but it was clear when we reached the next valley that the storms there had wreaked some damage. It looks like one thunderstorm has done this. The next fan of debris has come down. Wash that into the river here. Come late afternoon we kept our eyes peeled for a good stealth camp, but there was nothing, just nothing seemed right. Eventually we settled on a small clearing in some damp woods. Now well, we've just arrived in camp and it's chosen to absolutely hose down just as we push the tent up. The violent storms had certainly caused some damage. We had to exchange the cycleway for the road and the road for the cycleway because both had been blocked in different places. Gradually we climbed steeply up to the Hoturn Tunnel, a rail tunnel that crosses right underneath the Gross Glockner Mountains from south to the north. Fantastic spot for our 15th camp I think it is. Spectacular mountains all around. Camping on silty bank left behind by the recent flooding. Trish in the posh spa resort of Bad Gestein washing her stinky socks in a fountain of boiling hot water. Blocking the group up there. It looks like yet yeah, another thunderstorm's brewing, so we're just getting tea eaten, cooked and eaten before it uh, starts. We just had time to cycle steeply up and then walk up to the Zitower hut perched beside a lake right below the 3,303 metre Reichenspitzer, a very, very impressive rocky peak with remnant glaciers on its northern slopes. From our high camp below the Zitauer hut, a long descent took us back down to the inn, which we crossed, and then we climbed up into Germany, into the Iser Valley, an absolutely beautiful area of wonderful forest that reminded us of uh, Canada in the area of Jasper and Banff. We had an absolutely wonderful stealth camp here, perhaps the nicest of the whole trip. What a fantastic spot for a camp in the Isa Valley. I don't think we're really supposed to be camping here but it is delightful and hopefully nobody will see us. Look what we found, one of the last ones. morning cuppa. Is it a good brew, Trish? Does that mean yes? Yeah. This is very spectacular terrain in the Carvendel. Just heading back to the Eden Valley in the north. This is our last camp in the hills about 30 miles from Innsbruck. For our last night on the canvas we were treated to a wonderful sunset over the rugged peaks of the Zugspitz range in Germany. It's heading back to Innsbruck down the Inn Valley now.
From the comfort of our hotel room in Innsbruck, we reflected on our cycle tour. Every part of it had been fantastic. We slightly worried about stealth camping, but that was no problem at all. We didn't have one single issue. The scenery was fantastic throughout, and the cycling infrastructure makes anything in Britain seem so far behind the times. Cycle tour in Austria comes highly recommended. Last job before flying home is uh, taking the bikes to pieces and getting them in the bike bag. Mine's done, in that bag there. And Fisher's one will soon be going in that bag, just there. <laughs> it takes about an hour and a half to do both bikes.